We're live? We're live. Yay. We're like talking. People can hear us. We're going to talk about this movie that you call boring and that I watched all the time. And well, you always put it on the first part of it. Well, any part of it's great. Well, the first part, okay, but having to watch the first part over and over and over again. Just makes you appreciate the filmmaking that much more. Jeez Louise. I don't know. I'm really excited to talk about this movie. Yeah. Are so you? Am I. Yeah. It was I mean, fun to watch it's it, right? Sean Connery, after all. And you know how I feel about him. I know how you feel. <laughs> and, and this is kind of peak Sean. This is. This is peak like, Sean. oh, yeah, he's great. He's my 007. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, that's fine. Okay. Aww. No, it's all right. It's fine. He's 90. Well, greetings, Imagination Connoisseurs. Once again, it is I, your Duke of Dope Discourse, your Master of Fun and Wonder, your Viceroy of Verisimilitude, and your Sommelier of cinema and i am here with the woman that this show is named after a, a woman that makes any man who's sitting next to her look better than he is Aww. who might you be i am elizabeth gwendolyn bell the ace the arbiter of cinematic excellence and the enchantress of entertainment the enchantress of entertainment i can't believe that i was able to bamboozle you into talking about this movie I know. Well, I mean, you threw it out there. I couldn't say no. I did it live. I kind of, I, I did, I did ambush you with this. I ambushed you, and you're, you're ambushed. And, you know, I only tease you that I, I tease you about this movie being boring. I actually really, really like this movie because this movie fucking rules. I mean, come on, it's Sean Connery. Sean Connery. Yeah. I, okay. okay. And you okay. know how I feel about. I do. Sean I know Connery. how you feel about Sean Connery. I do. I, and you know what? I need to get a Marco Ramius action figure. <laughs> To be honest, because one of the great characters of all time. Yes, don't you think? that'd be great. Uh, so today we have a bottle of wine from our favorite couple, the official couple of the Burnett Work. Yes. Claude and Candida. Yes, we do. And uh, uh, La Vieille Felma. Fel oui. La Vieille. This would be the, this is our bottle of wine. Uh, I spoke French. It's not very good. You know, we're less than a thousand subscriptions away from you speaking French. Wow. A thousand subscriptions. I mean, uh, we're getting there. So if we get there, you're going to have to speak French. Yeah, I'll help you Your out. Your mom's calling the... you. Do you have to get that? I hope it's... I hope... I'm going to pour this up. I hope that she... Um, well, she was driving home. I hope it's to tell me. Yeah. Yes. Okay, good. Thank you, Mom. Bye. So she got home, okay. She's home. <laughs> well, that's good. So we are going to drink to John McTiernan's, I would say his one-two punch of Die Hard and Hunt for Red October, the pinnacle of studio filmmaking of the late 80s. Well, 1990 is still technically part of the 80s, if you yeah. really want to it's consider it. the year I graduated from high school. There you, well, I, I was already living in California. <laughs> uh, this comes after his writing, directing film Nomads, then The Predator, or pr just, pardon me, Predator, then Die Hard, then Hunt for Red October, establishing him as one of the preeminent action film directors. I mean, a real man's man. A man's man. And he went on to direct The Last Action Hero, but don't hold that against him. So here's to <laughs> his adaptation of Tom Clancy's novel, The Hunt for Red October. Mmm. So. French wine. It's pretty damn good. I like that French wine. Me too. Mm, that's lovely. It is lovely. So, Elizabeth, this movie is set in 1984. Yes. And it is positioned as if it really happened. Yeah, and it Although does. Although everybody, feel... everybody wants to say it didn't, perhaps right. it did. <laughs> we don't know. No. So, well, we well, okay. Uh, the, the the what is this movie about? What is a hunt for Red October about? <sighs> this movie. Mm-hmm is about the Russians, the Americans, submarines, <laughs> and defecting. Is that all it's about? <laughs> Action. Um, Testosterone is yeah, what this movie is about. There's only two female speaking roles in this film. That's true, and it's they're very brief. And one is, is Jack Ryan's daughter, yeah. And one is the most wacky cameo of all time. Yeah. Gates McFadden, straight from the set of Star Trek The Next Generation. Maybe they forgot they needed somebody that day. They called her up. They're like, hey, 
We're shooting this on another set, it's just over a few. <laughs> there's there's a couple of sound stages over. Could you just show up for a day? We don't even need you for a day. You just have to walk on and speak with an English accent because apparently you're Jack Ryan's right? English wife. Why did she have to have an English accent? I thought that was a little strange. Uh, like, you know what? The great thing is, is that she does, and it just gives the movie that much more verisimilitude. Sure. <laughs> I mean, come Although on. I did like that she was in this. Yeah, she just has this, and she literally, and she doesn't even stop. She's like walking yeah. all the way through the frame, and she's yeah. going out the door. That's right. And then even when she drives him to the airport, you see from the distance from the back that he gives her a kiss goodbye and that's it that is it that maybe is there's it. some women in the airport but no one ever no <laughs> females ever speak i don't think no 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 nope. so in 1984 yeah marco ramius the vilnius schoolmaster yeah. vilnius nastavniak uh the vilnius schoolmaster uh puts to sea in the red october a typhoon class submarine Yes, because it's, their, he, it's their new, the Russians' new submarine with these ex, these like. Well, we don't know what they are yet. Right. Can't true. jump ahead. That's true. All we see is that it's putting out to sea, and Sam Neill is his his. Uh, his second. What's yeah? Let his, me. His, I, his number one. His number one. <laughs> his, 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 yeah, his number one. Now, now, uh, his Mr. Spock. Yeah, if he's, he's Captain Spock. Kirk, it's Mr. Spock. Hang on, I want to get all these names right. Because this the cast, this movie has one yeah, of the greatest casts really ever great, made. Really great cast. Ever made. Sam Neill is Captain uh, Broden. Broden, he's the executive officer of the Red October. And uh, they have a conversation in the conning tower. Yes. And the sea is hard and cold and hard. Yes. As they leave Polyarni Inlet. <laughs> yes. So they're leaving. And, they're and leaving. You, you know, we don't know why, but hey, it seems like they're leaving. And they're Great. speaking Russian, and I thought that was really cool, the way they transition. But we're not there yet either. Oh, my God. But it is one of the greatest parts in the movie. So, cut to, and by the way, by the way, I mean, the music, Basil Polidoro's oh, score, his use of Russian sea yeah. shanties. I mean, this yeah, is... this is great. The sea shanty that they sing. Well, they, there's a couple. Right, um, you're ahead of yourself now. I, well, the music is is, well... The, the music is great because after they give the, uh, when the, 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 the Red October is putting out to see you hear the music from the yes. very beginning, building, yep, building, yep. building, and then you're into the opening credits. Yeah. And uh, then we jump to London where we see Jack Ryan, CIA analyst, Jack Ryan, former Marine, Jack Ryan played by Alec Baldwin. They wanted Kevin Costner for the role, but... As producer yeah. Mace Newfeld said, he was too busy with his buffalo. I couldn't get him. He was doing that buffalo movie. <laughs> yeah, just that little buffalo movie. So you know he's not living in London, and he he he's in a rush, but he's going to he's he's discovered something. He's going to Washington D.C. Yes, that's right. He goes to Washington D.C. because yeah, he has discovered something interesting. Yep. And he goes to meet with... Darth Vader. Darth Vader. He goes to meet... With, or, or uh, yeah, Darth, let's just say Darth Vader. <laughs> in, in, I mean, I love James Earl Jones and anything, but he is particularly good as Admiral Greer. He is. He's great. Jesus, Jack. I told you to speak your mind. <laughs> Actually, it's the other way around. I told you to speak your mind, but Jesus, Jack. So good. Anyway, so he goes to see... Yes, and he tells him what he's discovered, or what he thinks he's discovered. And what has he discovered? He doesn't know, actually. He doesn't know. He, he has pictures of this new submarine, and it has these weird doors on the side, on the outer... On the front and the back. Yeah. And he's wondering what they are. And he gets permission from Will, from Admiral Greer, to check it out. Right. So then he goes to see Ed Rooney. Ferris Bueller's principal. <laughs> Ferris Bueller's principal. He goes to see Ed Rooney because you know what? That's when you know when you're watching movies, especially movies like I guess from the '80s. Yeah. Every time another actor shows up, you don't think about the actor's name. No. You think about it's not like oh that's Jeffrey Jones. You're like no. oh my god it's Ed Rooney. <laughs> yeah. Clearly a fan Paramount. This movie, by the way, whoever cast this movie. Yeah. The casting it had an in at Paramount because not only do you have Gates McFadden, but you have like the douchey. Uh, the douchey, there's the there's uh, one of the douchey first officers when Data takes his first command in Redemption Part Two. Oh. 
his doozy, douchey oh, first off. He was he's got show. a little role. I mean, but everybody does. So it's like this is like the Paramount casting director yeah. love fest movie. Right. Well, they just probably just pulled them off other sets and just put them in. Yeah. So anyway, he goes. So to he goes see, to see Ed Rooney, who is an expert in submarines. But he's, he's an his Ed Rooney's or... name. How it's Skip. Uh, <clears throat> I'm I'm drawing a blank on his name. I have to I have to get their names right because the names are great. Uh, I thought he was Jeffrey Jones, Skip Ty- Skip Tyler. Yeah, he was sub driver. He was great in that role. I feel he was it, so good. He got felt... clipped by a drunk driver, so he lost his leg, so he couldn't command. Yeah. He couldn't command uh, subs anymore. Right, but he he knew a lot about subs. He knew a lot about, and he's working on a rescue submarine, a little rescue submarine that can that can attach to any submarine. Oh, right. You know, he's working on that, and and Jack Ryan says, "What do you? What kind of toys are these?" This isn't a toy. <laughs> this isn't a toy. And it's Skip Tyler who says maybe this is a caterpillar drive. Right. A silent propulsion system. Yeah, he's the one who figured it out. Now, why is a silent propulsion system a, a thing? If because, a submarine has a sight, why is that a thing? Because because the only way you can detect a submarine is with sonar and by the the pattern of the noise of the submarine. And if it doesn't make, if it barely makes a sound, then you wouldn't even know it was there. So it could be very dangerous. It could sneak up on the U.S. and bomb the shit out of us. <laughs> bomb the shit out of us. That's, that's a good way to put it. So then, then we meet other characters in the movie. We cut to the USS Dallas, right? Which is an American submarine, and we meet Courtney Vance, who is who is the he's all about sonar, and um, he's he's uh, Courtney yeah. Vance. He's the actor that plays the guy, and he's yeah. teaching Seaman Beaumont about yes, sonar, and they're right. having an, and then of course his 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 exo comes and makes fun of him because he says that uh, wait what's Courtney Vance's why do I always forget Courtney Vance's character a uh, Seaman Jones Seaman yeah, Jones. Jones Seaman Jones and Seaman Beaumont Beaumont and uh, uh, they're, they're, he, Seaman Jones Courtney Vance is like the the the, the Amadeus of sonar he's he they're just trying to show that he's very good at listening and so I mean they tell this cute story about um, about the difference between Paganini and <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Pavarotti. That's right. Pavarotti is a tenor. Paganini is a composer. composer. And so, um, yeah, so he's really good at hearing these these patterns of ships. And while he's teaching Seaman Beaumont about this, because they are monitoring Pollyarney Inlet. They are. And the Red October slides out, and they detect it. They do. They detect it, and... They do, and then all of a sudden. Well, oh yeah, yeah. You're, but then, then yeah. we cut to inside the Red October, <laughs> right. where there we know there's some kind of shenanigans happening. Something's going on, mm-hmm. and and uh, we've got uh, Broden, the the XO, and and um, uh, Sean Connery. Sean, yeah, uh, uh, um, <laughs> Ramis. Ramis. Ramis, Marco Ramius. There, but but Marco mm-hmm. Ramius comes out and gives this great speech. He talks about the heady days of Sputnik and Yuri Gagarin, you know, and <laughs> and now we play our game with the Americans, and it's just the most ultimate Scottish Russian speech of all time. Yes, yeah, he's still speaking of, in Russian at this point. No, they switched to English. Yes. Oh right. Well, yeah, we haven't. That's right. We we the the before this we do meet the. Peter Firth, and uh, Peter Firth is, is Ivan Putin, the political officer. Now, Peter Firth, if anybody watches the British show MI5, or as it's known in Britain, Spooks, and he's in Life Force, again, Peter Firth is badass, and he's reading Marco Ramius' book that his dead wife gave him. And right. it's, the, it's the year anniversary of his dead wife's right. death, and he's got a book and that talks about Oppenheimer, I Am Become Death. And uh, it's a great thing, like you talk about what happened. How do they change from English or from Russian to English? Um, so they uh, they push in with the camera. And On the Peter Firth, he's reading in Russian, and then it cuts. A, and the last word is Armageddon. Yeah, and then it, and then and then the, the camera pulls out, and they switch to English. It's kind of a really cool, way, so cool, cool way. So you you get the sense like, okay, they're still speaking Russian, and they just have made it a possible for the rest of us to understand. By the way, if I was ever able to direct the fan film Axanar, we were going to rip that off. 
yeah. with the Klingons. There's a whole opening walk well, that's and talk. A great, that's a great technique. It was Klingons, and then we push in. He gives a speech, and then, and then he didn't get to do it. Bummer. Oh, well. Oh, well. But it's so great. And then, of course, they have to get whatever shenanigans are happening, they have to get rid of this guy. Yeah. So, yeah, he's, like, questioning him and annoying him. <laughs> And um, he he kills him. Marco Ramey straight up murders him. <laughs> he just kills just, him. Just and it's brutal. Yep. And oh wow! He like, he like breaks his neck and gets rid of the political <laughs> officer. And then out of left field, Doctor Frankenfooter himself from the Rocky Horror Picture Show, the great Tim Curry, is the doctor on board the Red October. Oh, you're right. Darkness right, right, right. from Legend. My God. <laughs> If this cast couldn't keep getting, it just keeps getting better every time they introduce somebody. And we haven't even met Fred Dalton Thompson yet, but yeah. there's Tim Curry as the doctor. Yes, and so uh, he orders the the men to come and take the body away, and, and you know explains that he died accidentally, and the doctor is kind of freaking out. And uh, he's that a guy, by the book by communist. The book. He is. He is. Um, uh, so. The captain has a key, and so did that guy. Because you have to have two missile keys. Everyone knows. We saw war games. Yep. You need to see. You need to have two missile two, keys two to keys. launch. And as they're taking the body out, Sean Connery grabs the key, and um, he he puts it on himself. And um, and the doctor, the doctor Tim is like he he kind of is like you you shouldn't do that. You 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 have to give it to somebody else. How about you give it to me? Um, and the captain just like kind of blows him off and the doctor's like freaking out now what's really great about this is if you don't know anything about this movie like and you haven't seen crimson tide because it hasn't been made yet but most people who are seeing the movie now come back and see it and so anyway so you don't they really do a good job of creating suspense here mm -hmm. like what mm -hmm. are these people doing yeah what's up you know and and clearly there's some shenanigans going on sean connery has straight up flat out murdered a dude right so you immediately are established because i've seen this movie a hundred million times mm -hmm. so i'm like it it, it 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 i know everything that happens however i'm oh, always i know especially the first part you've I, seen it a million a million times. million Is, so have, have I. I seen the big short or this more it's probably equal yeah well but what's great about this is i think they do a really good job of setting up like you really don't know Right. And you don't know what's going on, and you don't know what's happening. And then we cut back to the Dallas, and they, after Connery killed this guy and gives the silent, gives his speech, they turn on the silent drive. They do. And the Dallas is watching the ship come out of Polyarni, and it disappears right in front well, of. Well, they cross right, uh, you know, they they cross right over it, and uh, and then all of a sudden, it's the the sound is gone. 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 And then of course. Uh, Jack. At this point, once they turn that silent drive on, they all they all the seamen start singing in Russian. Yeah. Do, 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 they're very la, 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 la. It's like moment. the uh, it's the I think they're singing the Russian national anthem. Is it? I don't yeah. know. I wouldn't know. Da, na, 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 na. No, do you know no, the no. Russian anthem? Well, I do know that Putin reestablished, or he brought back the original words that were in the Russian national anthem, and that is something I can get behind because the Russian national anthem is kind of badass. Is it? It is. Hmm. Anyway, they're singing that, and what do Seaman Beaumont and what does uh, what does Seaman yeah. Jones hear? He and of Jones. course after the Paganini pa uh, 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 Pavarotti. Uh, Pavarotti joke. When he says, I heard singing, it's like, oh, you got discredited. You've got singing on the brain. <laughs> right? Seaman Jones has been discredited. I don't know what he's thinking. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say discredited, but they, they're like, yeah, sure. He says he, he's heard singing. He thought he heard singing. He always thinks he hears singing. <laughs> he turns the entire, the, the, the Dallas into his own. I love the, the archaic language. Turned it into his, 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 he turned it into his own stereo set. It's great. It's great. And then they go back to, after after Skip Tyler, Jack Ryan goes back to Admiral Greer and says, yeah. they're getting into an elevator together, there's a walk and talk, he gets in and he goes, you're never going to believe what I found out. You know what those doors are? And what does Admiral Greer say? I don't know what he says. He says a silent propulsion system? Oh. <laughs> How did you know that? How did he know that? 
well come on, you, we watch this how do you come on I don't remember by the way part. by the way this is a time to interject <laughs> uh, this is uh, this is how fanatical I am this is my steel book with my steel book uh, cover I've got these covers I put on my steel books these vinyl covers uh, this is the brand new 4k steel book of the transfer of hunt for Red October and my god Whew. Is there a hot toy of, of... No, there is no hot toy. See, I, I feel like there's a whole market for the eight guys that would want the Marco Ramius hot toy. I think that I think that I should I should start my own toy no, company. I think a lot of people love this film. I think they do. Oh. And I think a lot of people love Sean Connery. Well, How come there's no Zed? How come there's no uh, Marco well, Ramius? You know, kids don't exactly clamor for Zardoz. What the hell? I, I know Come you on, think. People. I mean, what? Well, parents are clearly not raising their children right. The gun is good. The, the penis, penis is, is evil. evil. You don't want to tell your kids the penis is evil, though. Maybe. The gun in America. The last thing you want to tell kids is that the gun is good and the penis is evil. It's not a good message. Not a good look. Right, but parents don't have to tell the kids. Like, you'd think that kids would be, be like, "Ooh, yeah." Maybe. Anyway, so. So they're doing this great, like, it, it, it was like a, almost like a West Wing walk and talk 10 years before the West Wing happened. They're walking. <laughs> That's true. And, and, and Jack Ryan is not even paying attention. He's trying to explain, listen, what's going on and how do you know about this? And Admiral Greer says the Red October disappeared right before the Dallas. The Dallas is right in front of it and it disappeared. Right. Right. And and so uh, now we're where are we going? We're going to a briefing and they're going to the White yes, House. Right. They're going to the White House. And Jack House. Ryan's like, who's giving the briefing? And what does Admiral Greer say? <laughs> He's like, you are. You are. <laughs> You're like, giving the briefing. He just stops. <laughs> uh, but all of this, I have to say, is this not monumentally entertaining? This movie yes. is, 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 it is such a big, they are not making movies like this anymore. No, they aren't. They are like, not making movies like this no. anymore. And, and this was par for the course. This is when Paramount, the great mountain, yeah. When Paramount would just toss this stuff out, and it was awesome. It's true. It's true. Yeah, we need more movies like this. We do need more movies like this. Yeah. We absolutely do. Yeah. There, you could totally make a movie about um, Russian uh, infiltration and... Uh, Gosh, they've maybe, never done uh, that anymore. Is somebody uh, defecting at this point? <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, those are the days. I miss. I don't know. The, I, I don't know if the... anyone would want to defect to the U.S. at this point. Oh, I miss the heady. No, Everyone they wouldn't. Is... Everyone's leaving the yeah. U.S. <laughs> yeah, I mean, people are defecting to Russia. <laughs> I, don't I mean, know Edward about Snowden's that. chicken. He's That's chilling true. out. You know, he's it's like, hey, what's up? Out up there. <laughs> I mean, if you don't like somebody, Putin's like, yeah, I'll poison him. I'm gonna just send <laughs> my kick murder squad out to get whomever. <laughs> it's true. I'll call the Saudi prince. Hey, can you take them? He you know. does poison people. He does, but that that one dude, the Russian dissident who uh, the oligarch or whatever who got poisoned, came out of his coma with his daughter. He, well, no, they have a new one, a new one, a new one. He came out of his coma today, and he's like, Why I gotta they go. poison him. Dissenting against Putin, you know what he says? I'm going back to Russia. You're kidding? Well, I'm not. yeah, because they're twisting his arm. No, no, well, you know, he, he doesn't want them to try again. Well, they're gonna try again. They try, yeah. So well, why is he going back to Russia? Where he else is he gonna go? Hide somewhere. He wasn't in Russia when he got poisoned. Where was he? Somewhere else. Like speaking somewhere. So was somewhere. that other guy with his daughter? I know. He was in La he was in England. Well, that's too obvious. Go somewhere. See, this is all asymmetric. It was better when you had the Cold War and you stole submarines like this. <laughs> now it's everything is asymmetric. It's not as fun. Okay, so Jack Ryan gives a briefing, and that's when Greer. I mean, and it's a great brief briefing. It is. So in this briefing, something else we didn't we didn't say. What's great is how this movie jumps around so you've got here are the locations now we're in washington dc yeah we're on the red october yes we're on the dallas and then we like cut to the kremlin when oh, right. we, we we cut to the kremlin right. where we 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 and, and then again john mctiernan never spares a moment where he can add character <laughs> so yeah. admiral padoran is introduced and there's this great scene we don't even see admiral padoran's face you're following him through through the, his office, he's yeah. like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, hello, Admiral. Like, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's so great. I mean, and and uh, McTiernan's use of the widescreen Panavision frame is just the way I mean, it, the cameras always go. It goes either close to wide. I mean, p 
peak verisimilitude in this movie. Peak verisimilitude. I mean, my God, has anyone used the Panavision lens, I mean, in a big budget Hollywood movie the way McTiernan does? And it's so great. Like, he'll go from a close-up, you'll be talking, and then you'll walk away and the camera will follow you, and it'll crane up and watch you walk into the distance. So good. So good. So the Padorn thing, Admiral Padorn comes in, and, and then he's got, like, his valet who's making him tea, and he's, you know, militaried up. And he's like, you got a letter from Marco Ramius. Oh, Marco. Yeah, this is his his wife's... Okay, uncle. His wife's uncle. Yeah. Yeah. So he sent a letter to Admiral Padorin yes. at the Kremlin. Mm-hmm. And again, there's just this great moment. What happens? Uh, you, again, tea. You've already seen yes. one Russian die from tea. So here's some more tea that's been poured. Is it tea or is it coffee? Whatever. I think it's coffee. It's tea. Let's say it's tea. It's pretty dark. Okay, but that co- could be tea. Okay, it's coffee. I mean, it looks like it could be espresso. I think it's coffee. Espresso. Yeah, it's like some... some... Yeah. Some really strong coffee. Mm. And this beautiful glass cup with a with a silver sculpture. Oh yeah, I mean it's the the height of Czarist Russian. No, I guess it's not Czarist anymore. It's it's Leninist. Yeah, but it's still a remnants of of the the czars. Yeah, yeah. Yes. it's that elegant. Yes. Yes. We'll get rid of all the the, the czars, but we'll we'll, we'll keep, keep all their the, stuff. Yeah. Right. Right. You know. So okay, so he pours his assistant pours him coffee. And he opens the letter. And he's, it's so great. He's reading the letter. He's reading the letter. And then he spills his coffee. It's great. It I is. love it. It's a good scene. And then and then Jack Ryan. Now we're back. We're, that actually happens before the briefing that Jack right. Ryan's giving. So, and, and they know. And, and in the briefing, it is. Um, they're told that the Russians have deployed all of their submarines and their ships. And so they're they're trying to decide why are they doing this. Yep, they don't know. And so uh, most of the people there are thinking, oh no, it's an attack. they're coming to attack America. They don't know if it's a thing, but they also know, well, they inter- they say that 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 Marco Ramius has sent Pedor said he's going to attack the United States, right? And, oh my God, they've got a mad one. Of, there's again all of the generals and all the right, uh, right, say, right. my God, they've got a madman on their hands, right. you know. So everybody thinks that the Russians the are Russians are gonna, chasing after him because he's crazy. But in reality, well, well, Jack Ryan says, "Son of a bitch!" in the middle of the meeting, and everyone looks right. at him. And then a, another great actor. Let's bring on. Richard Jordan, who <laughs> you must remember as playing Francis from Logan's Run. Ah. Francis from Logan's Run Francis. comes on and again chewing the scenery in the most best way possible. You have something to add, Dr. Ryan? <laughs> so good. <laughs> so good. And 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 of course he wants to hear it cuz he's yeah. he's the defense secretary, you yeah. know, and, and Dr. Ryan, the way he says it, the way he enunciates his word, and he looks like the Cheshire Cat. He's always got this grin on his face. So good. Yeah. And he he basically says, "What do you what?" And what does Jack Ryan think? Jack Ryan thinks that that Mark Marco uh, Ramius is defecting. Is def- and and why do you, why does he think that? He um he knows him. He's met him before, and um. I don't know why else. Well, because it's the it's the anniversary of his wife's oh, death. Oh, that's right, that's right. And he talks about the fact he explains things. He's the Vilnius schoolmaster. He's taken out, and and he he believes because he's trained all of their officer corps. Yes. So he could find people that are loyal to him, which we know, which we know that he's got a group of people on the Red October. He does that are loyal to him. Yeah, because they show a scene after the after they take the dead body away. Of him meeting with his core group, and um, and they're not there. Look, his core group is there's oh, there's dissent in the ranks. Like you you can't kill the political officer. Right. So, and he's like, and, and then he tells them about the letter he wrote to Bedoran. Yeah, and they're like, why did and you do that? Why? Yeah, how can you do that? And, he, and and then it's so great. It's so great. When Cortez went to the New World, <laughs> he burned his ships. That way his men were properly motivated. It's so great! God, I love this movie so much! Anyway, 
So, <laughs> the Americans are like, Jack Ryan is given by, by the way, what's what's uh, his, uh, I got, I forget, oh, Jeffrey Pelt, the National Security Advisor. Jeffrey Pelt is Richard Jordan's name. So, Jeffrey Pelt says, all right, I'll tell you what, I will give you three days yeah. to prove your theory. Yes. And and it's so great because uh, uh, someone's got to go out there and make contact with Ramius. Yep. And Jeffrey Bell's like, great, when do you leave? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and yes. And so Jack Ryan, CIA analyst who has a bad back because he broke it in a helicopter crash, is, is suddenly now pissed off the Joint Chiefs and is now going to prove his theory that Marco Ramius is defecting. Yes. Now, how do you feel about all this movie, this movie so far? Oh, it's great. It's like pulls you right in and um, it's exciting. I mean, one of the things about this film, you know, I was I always bang on about verisimilitude or whatever. This movie combines great writing, great characterization, yeah. great acting where none of the characters, not one actor is 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 they all add something to the tapestry. Mm -hmm of awesome that is this movie. And this movie keeps introducing characters as we go along. Yeah. So basically, we are leaving Washington, D.C. behind. Yes. We're leaving it behind, and we're following Jack Ryan, where he's going to go out and... Yeah, he goes on a um, on one of the ships. Well, yeah. That, um, what are those called? That an land... Air, well, an aircraft an air, carrier. Aircraft carrier. So he's, he's going out there, but now... What we have going on is, let's introduce a new character. Let's introduce Stellan Skarsgård. <laughs> right. Stellan Skarsgård is on a Russian Akula class submarine. <laughs> and Stellan Skarsgård is somebody who admires Marco Ramius, who knows Marco Ramius. And the Russians are basically saying, because now Padorn got the letter, they know, the Russians know, he's defecting. So yes. the Russians are like, we have to kill this motherfucker and take out this boat. And Stellan Skarsgård, who got the, the the order late, we meet Stellan Skarsgård, and he's like, "My God, you know." And where are we going to go? His, we're going to kill a friend. Well, I mean, it's so great, Stellan. Again, because they keep adding. I mean, as this movie goes along, it violates every. I mean, the plot is great. You got the main character, yeah. but you just keep adding awesome characters as you go. So suddenly, you now we have, we have uh, uh, more locations. So. There's Stellan Skarsgård's boat, his Akula class boat. <clears throat> there is the Red October. There is the Dallas. We've got all those characters. Yeah. Then there is Jack Ryan. Yep. And Jack Ryan goes to on to an aircraft carrier. And who do we meet? We meet the actor that plays Professor Moriarty in episodes of The Next Generation. Because <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> enough to have Gates McFadden. So now we're going to have Professor Moriarty. <laughs> And right. not to be outdone, Fred <laughs> Dalton Thompson. Oh my God, who's <laughs> actually a real American statesman who dabbles in acting. Oh, very. Knox cool. Pooley, if you're a wise guy fan. Let's find out. Fred. Uh, okay, Skellen Skarsgård plays Captain Tupolov. 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 Uh, he's uh, he's uh, Konovalov. He's uh, Tupolov is commanding the Konovalov. Let's get all this right. And Fred Dalton Thompson is Admiral Painter, commander of what? The USS Enterprise. Oh yeah. I mean, could this movie get any better? I don't think it can. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I mean, and hang on. Let's find out. Uh, uh, does it say who? Uh... Oh, yes. Daniel Davis is Captain Davenport, the commanding officer of the USS Enterprise. There we go. So we got Admiral Painter and Captain uh, Daniel Davis is Captain Davenport. So then Jack Ryan meets them. He does. And he goes there, and, and Davenport's uncomfortable with him because he's kind of like the kid. Yeah, he's and young, then, and, you know, and he's telling him this information that he's like... And Davenport, uh, Fred Dalton Thompson has to correct him and go, you know, this, he's got this kind of... Uh, I can't even do a Fred Dalton Thompson. He's got this kind of sing-song, but, but this... You, it, when Fred Dalton ta Thompson talks, you don't... <laughs> like, I kind of wish that they made a Buddy Admiral movie with Fred Dalton Thompson and uh, James Earl Jones after this, where these two dudes are, are somehow going off on some 
some crusade to save the world. They should have done, Tom Clancy should have written an Admiral Painter and Admiral Greer book where the two of them just did some shit because they're awesome. That Don't sounds you? interesting. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think my enthusiasm for this movie is running away with me. Oh, are you enthusiastic about this movie? I'm very enthusiastic about this movie. I, I can't, I can't help myself. <laughs> I, I, you know, I love it. I, because we lived through it. We lived through the Cold War. We did. We did. It was very real. And this movie came out not very long after the Cold War sort of ended. It's true. So, Admiral Painter tells Captain Davenport, he's like, look, you, you got to respect Jack Ryan because he was in traction for 10 months. You know, respect the man. And it's, so it's it's great. So so Jack Ryan is on this, on this boat. Yeah. And then the Russians are now going to sink the Red October because they know yeah. that the Russians are, are lying to the Americans. They and are. And then we introduce yet another character, another great actor. Oh, my God. And I, I want to get his I want to get his name right. Well, Yas Auckland, who if you watched, I don't know if, was Lethal Weapon 2? Yeah, Lethal Weapon 2 is uh, the evil South African from Lethal Weapon 2. Yas Auckland plays the Russian... He plays Andrei Lysenko, the Soviet ambassador to yes. the United States, mm -hmm. and so then we have Richard Jordan in the you know where the joint wherever his office is, yeah. if it's in the White House somewhere. Yeah. So then they have their little ping pong game. Yes, where at first you know he's asking him, well, you know, uh, why are the Russians sending out all their boats? And he makes some lame excuse that, um, what was it? <laughs> it's like an exercise, you know, we're looking for whatever. Yeah, uh, we're, or, what does he say at that point at the beginning? I don't even remember. But it's funny how it goes along, his story changes. Right, well that's, what's so great is, it's set up and pay off and set up and pay off. I mean, again, the writing, what's really interesting about this movie is, is McTiernan talks about, uh, in the special features, talks about that Larry Ferguson and Donald Stewart wrote the screenplay and and they talk about how in the 80s tom clancy was like every man yeah. was reading his books yeah yeah and it was and this book was it was not published by a major publisher it was published by the naval press and he had written hunt for october and then the follow-up was red storm rising which is not a jack ryan novel hmm. it's a story unto itself about world war three really so everybody was reading these books and and so this was a, a, a big thing where where uh, Mace Newfeld went and was able he sent one of his minions and they bought it from the book fair. Oh wow! Yeah, they bought it from the book fair and I'm I'm trying to think of who somebody else tried to buy this book and I, I forget who it was, and Mace Newfeld beat them to the punch. But the first script, uh, McTiernan said, "Well, I like your script, but we're going to throw it all away." So when McTiernan became involved right. he was heavily influenced in rewriting the script and again it's really hard to juggle like go from place to place to place and each time they reestablish or establish a new location they introduce you to new characters right. and new milieus and how do you work it really is a beautifully realized piece of writing and direction because they introduce a character then they put some them somewhere else so so richard jordan and and joss auckland and they're basically the way they shoot it, it's the coverage is always the same. You know, you come back and you it's always the same frame with Yoss Auckland and Richard Jordan when they come back. They don't like show you the room. Right. They should because because they can't. I mean, it, it, they need the economy of storytelling. So, it's it's brilliantly directed and, and very well written and and there's a lot of moving parts and the fact that were you ever lost watching the movie? No. No. It was very well explained. I feel like I'm talking too much. No, it's fine. Are you sure? Yeah. I just love I, I this mean, movie. I you're, mean, you're so enthusiastic about this movie, which I think is... <laughs> I, I mean, you know what? It, to me, it, it, it's like the very best episodes. This is this is a great episode of Star Trek, which is maybe why... Yes. Why, maybe why, I mean, to yes, me, absolutely. this is like what Balance of Terror did, what the Defector did. You know, this, this to me is, is one of the grand military episodes of Star Trek. <laughs> it's true. I mean, like this and Master and Commander is another one. So... If you're a big Star Trek fan, unlike the 
garbage that they're dishing out to us now. <laughs> I mean, I think every fucking producer of modern Star Trek should watch The Hunt for Red October so they can learn how to fucking write. It's true. And, and direct. Yes. Because this is how you do it. This is how you do it. Which is another song that people should remember from the 80s. <laughs> this is how you do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, watch this movie. Yeah, definitely watch this movie. So anyway... So you got Jack yes. Ryan, who's on the Enterprise. He's on the Enterprise. He's on. So if this if if this wasn't a stealth Star Trek movie already, right? He's on the Enterprise. He's on the Enterprise. <laughs> and basically, Fred Dalton Thompson. Well, he's the admiral, but Captain Davenport Moriarty from Next Generation is the captain. Right. But Fred Dalton Thompson is overseeing stuff, and <laughs> and there's planes coming. And now you've got. The, the American Navy and the Russian Navy are all in the North Atlantic, and all hell could break loose at, yes, at a moment's notice. it could. It could. Now, what do we learn? What, what, what's going on in the Red October? There's a saboteur on board. Yes. Yes. So, um, somebody has sabotaged their, their secret... Their caterpillar drive. Their, yes. And, and, and... They can no longer be be undetected no and they have to use their and so uh there's all kinds of shenanigans the russians are dropping in sonar buoys all over the place the tension is ratcheted up and so yes and we so now, know now they can be found which is pretty scary for for them for ramius and uh and and uh sam neil yeah so so ramius and jurassic park are in a bad state they are and uh, Sam Neill again in another movie that we've done. We did Possession early <laughs> we did, on. We did. Now we see Sam Neill. He went from Andre Zuliski to, <laughs> you know, his wife was fucking an alien to now he's the first officer on the Hunt for Red October, on, on the Red October itself. <laughs> That's right. Fucking an alien. Fucking, well, his wife was. Yes. His wife, Isabella Johnny, was fucking a. <laughs> she was. It might not be an alien. It might be a, a, <clears throat> a Lovecraftian demon. We never really know. It's uh, weird. Spoiler alert. We just wrecked possession for you. Watch watch our show about it. <clears throat> I go off on that movie. So anyway, there's a lot of machinations that we get into. I mean, we, we don't need to go over all of them. No, we don't. But Jack Ryan and, and by the way, Scott Glenn. Scott Glenn, who's the best pilot... Not best part you ever saw, but Scott Glenn, Jose Jimenez from The Right Stuff plays, you know, Captain of the Dallas. I mean, so all of these different puzzle pieces are going along and the Americans realize that he's defecting. They finally believe Jack Ryan. He convinces everybody. But they don't they don't tell you that because because um, you're not sure at the point where when the American uh, ship gets there. So before that happens, though, um, Jack Ryan <clears throat> get, takes a helicopter so that he can actually go onto the Red October. The Dallas. No, he has to go to the oh, Dallas. Oh, onto the Dallas. To talk right, to the right. Red October. He That's has right. to talk to Ramius. That's right. He wants to talk to him. So um, they they fly him to the submarine. And you were getting up. You were getting a little stressed out. I was like, "This is crazy! Like, how do you get onto a submarine from a helicopter in the middle of a storm in the it, North Atlantic?" I was like, "This where you'll this, die in four minutes." That would be like my worst nightmare. <laughs> like, I do not like submarines. I do not like the thought of being underwater like that. So, and then to to have to like descend from a helicopter in the middle of the ocean and get into this. Like, it's like trying to, you know, I don't know, to thread a needle. Like, you're trying to get this dude in this tiny little... Oh, yeah. I know. Crazy. And so, um, it ends up they they can't. And so he, you know, they told him, <clears throat> if if you can't get onto the, the submarine, then we're, we only have a limited number of time, uh, a time before we run out of fuel. So, we will, we will take you up, back up. So, um, now it's important to point out that it was Alec Baldwin's idea. Yes. Cause he said, wouldn't it be great if there's a scene where I'm looking up 
and when I let go, you can see my face as I fall away. Yes, that great. was Alec Baldwin's, and John McTiernan says, that's a great idea. Yes. Let's do that. Yeah, so he does. He um, he unclamps the rope, and he falls into the ocean. And they told him, you could only, you'll only survive for four minutes in the ocean. It's that cold. It's that cold. So, and they send a diver. They send a diver to get him. Bart Mancuso sends it. Is it it's Bart Mancuso, right? Yeah, Bart, the captain of the yeah. Dallas, sends a uh, diver yeah. out to get him. They pull him in. Yeah. And he's annoyed. I mean, he's annoyed at this point. He's like, we were following Well, they were October. following. They figured well, They figured and, out how to track him. Until you made us, like, come up and get you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the Dallas knew it was up. They're the only, and, and there's all these... Mac, I mean, it gets very... We could sit here. It would take us a long time. It's not as actually complex. If you Have you ever read a Tom Clancy novel? I have not. I have. I read. I read all the Jack Ryan books up to executive orders, where he becomes president of the United States. <laughs> and why they didn't do that? In one of the great tragedies, they should. They still could they actually. Still, yeah. I mean, they. They. It's. It, there's the unofficial Jack Ryan movie, which is Air Force One. You know, we went from Patriot Games to Clear and Present Danger, and then uh, look, I'm a big fan of. I even like Ben Affleck mm -hmm. as Jack Ryan, young Jack Ryan. I did not like again Shadow Recruit. Hot garbage. Not good. Anyway, I'm not going to... Although John Krasinski as Jack Ryan's pretty good. Right. Even though the second season ripped off Clear and Present Danger, but I'm mean, whatever. So, so, the, 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 the... Okay, okay. so... Why yes. don't you, yeah. So, he gets on to the Dallas and, um... He wants to be able to communicate with the... Yeah, but then he Captain... He explains to them... Bart that, Mancuso gets uh Right, so uh, he explains to them they're trying traffic. to defect, but then he gets orders saying that... Um, they're they, going to launch. They're, they're, they're going to they're gonna attack America, so you need to destroy they them. They bought into Russian propaganda. Yeah, so he gets the orders to destroy them. And Jack Ryan's like, no! Yeah, and then he convinces him not to and convinces him that they're defecting. Well, Jack Despite Ryan shows, he, 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 he plays he, he plays a Kirk. He a does. Ca a, Kirkian, a Kirkian gambit says they're going to have a crazy Ivan. They're going to go to starboard at the top of the hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. And um, so then the captain believes him and... Um, so then what? They need to figure out how to communicate with them. Actually, Captain Dallas is kind of Captain Kirk. Bart Mancuso is like the Kirk of the movie. He is. Because he, he believes in his people. That's right. And he, he ends up he ends up believing in Jack Ryan. It's true. It's true. He does. Yeah. Um okay, so they decide to use their their that little submarines. That well, no, they they commu they actually go to the top. You know, they oh, they that's communicate right. this is a cool scene. via via Morse they code. They do, they do. They so, um, yeah. So he has the orders to to shoot them. And well, then... they do they do. What's really great is submarine warfare. Yeah, is very interesting, and it's all about sounds and people can tell whether you've opened your 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 doors. And, right. And it, 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 you really need to understand how sub-warfare works and how torpedoes work. And what I love about this movie is it never goes, let me explain to you how no. a torpedo is armed, blah, 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 blah. This movie assumes the audience is smart. I mean, it's a little, look, it's a little right, reduced Right, but also down. the way they, they explain it is, it's not, like, you don't feel like they're talking to the audience. Like, right. Yeah. Right? Yeah, and you get to understand, like, they talk about saps, they have all this military jargon, yeah. and they do a great job of using the jargon and then kind of paying it off. And and again, I really appreciate that. This movie assumes the audience that watches it is smart. Right. I hate movies that, that are so contrived. And I insane. honestly, the, the, the sad part is, I don't think this movie, this movie is 30 years old this year. I don't think this movie would get made today. They would do it as a mini series or whatever, but even the mini series or the the TV version, I don't think the script. I mean, the economy of storytelling in this, this is studio filmmaking at its height, and it was made for adults. It was made for discerning audiences. The movie was a hit, and it's so. I think the reason I love it so much is because I don't get this anymore. I don't get a little bit over two hours of awesome action political thriller 
based on I mean, a book. Occasionally. Maybe. Occasionally. Studios aren't making these movies anymore. Um, yeah. What was that one about the 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 gambling? Um, <clears throat> she was running the gambling. Oh, Molly's game. I thought that was really intense. Molly's game again. Uh, Aaron Sorkin. No, that was great. But I agree with you. Molly's game is exa- that's a very astute. It's, yeah. You are the arbiter of cinematic excellence. <laughs> that is a very. Too bad I can't remember the names. But of no, these but movies. but but that's that's <clears throat> fair. We, you know, I own that. It's right over there. We should do that one. I really like that film. We should do. Oh, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's. Why don't we do it Wednesday? Okay. Instead of. Uh, <laughs> you oh can't no, find no the, we can't push the still, verdict. You still can't find the disc. It's here somewhere. Okay, so if you can't find the disc, then we will do we Molly's will do game. Molly's game, but we will let you know tomorrow. How's that? Okay, Molly's game's really good. I love it's, Molly's it's game. It's really good. It's really good. Okay. Um, it's also movie. got peak Idris Elba. Yes. Peak Idris Elba. Yes. No, but but so you know this the 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 way it builds up to the end. I mean, the whole everybody's involved. The way because they figure out. That they had to get the crew of the Red October off to fake a, a nuclear uh, contamination accident. I mean, there's it's it's hard to there's so much detail it would take us forever to. There is, and and this you know this part is really great, but you're right, it's too much to explain. So so let me ask you this. I mean, this movie is very much a guy's film. Do you, as a woman, watching this film, you seem to be into it? Last night we were watching. Oh, you were it's in- so good. So now, good. you you've ensconced yourself in Star Trek. You've watched season one, two, and three of the original series. Now you're in the middle of season five of Next Generation. Right. So you are eight seasons into Star Trek. Yeah. Do you think that? And you're loving it, right? Of course, I love it. Do you think that your exposure to Star Trek made you more amenable to this kind of a movie? I mean, I don't know. I always like this kind of stuff. Um. Maybe. I mean, I did watch Star Trek when I was young. Um, but, I mean, I, I'm curious about, like... I feel like, like people who are attracted to Star Trek kind of stories would also be attracted to this kind of story. Right. Okay. Right. I, I agree with you. Yeah. So, as you're watching it, what are some of the things that you liked about this film? It's just really well done, and the story's very interesting. I mean, there's never a moment where you're like what's going on or you know this is boring or i know i tease you and tell you that it's yeah boring. you and, and that's why i because you, I, if I, you watch the beginning of the film over and over and over and over again well that's because then you'd come in and make me watch something else because you know you you're do like this. are you watching this again no no you never watch the whole movie through that's the thing same with um the other one you watch all the time you never watch the whole thing through you just like start you watch the beginning and then you get bored and, and I don't get switch, bored. Or you to, just like switch. To you come in. Else. You I, I feel bad because I'm watching something you're not. No, you never watch the whole movie through. Yeah, and you'll do that with other films because you're, you're watch, there. You just watch little snippets. Well, yeah, that's true because I'm learning your clips, just like when you uh, when you watch YouTube. Are you selling me out to our YouTube audience? Your clips, your YouTube clips. Well, I'm trying to keep up on what other YouTubers are doing <laughs> now that I become a YouTuber. <laughs> Another adjective. That guy's um, a YouTuber. You know what clips we get to watch? America's Got Talent. It's on tonight. Oh, okay, well. We love to watch those clips. Mm. <laughs> but let's get back to the movie. Anne. So tell me more. I mean, obviously, th- th- this is a film that deals with war and brinksmanship and politics. And and yet, it's there's a lot of humor in this movie. Don't you think? Yeah. I mean, th- this movie could be relentlessly serious and dour and downbeat. And I think one of the things that McTiernan brings to this is humor. It, there's a lot of funny, I mean, there's a lot of funny stuff. It, 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 even though it's very serious, there's a lightheartedness. There is. A deft touch that's hard to do. Yeah. And I think that this movie should get credit for that. That's true. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, there's always jokes. There's always some, even when Captain Dallas is Morse code? That's okay. My Morse, my Morse code's a little rusty. 
You know, I might be sending him a recipe for what I mean. It's very, <laughs> yeah. there's no reason to make jokes there, but they do. And it makes the movie seem much more. Well, I mean, it gives the characters way more depth. And um, I feel like it's more true to humanity. I think that we are like that. I mean, there are certain people who do joke about what, especially when they're in very serious situations, that's their way of dealing with the stress. And so that's, you know, there are people like that. And that's great to include that in films. Yes. I agree. Yeah. I agree. And it's great. It, it makes it feel more real. It's true. I, yeah. I, no, I, I, I think, but that's why I think this movie is grand entertainment. Plus, you know what else makes this a great film? I do not. You're going to tell me, though. Oh. No, I mean, look, the acting <laughs> in this film, and by the way, I have to say that I do think Alec Baldwin is Jack Ryan. The oh, first he Jack, is great. He's great. He's great. Because he's got, I mean, look. A really young Alec Baldwin. I really love Alec Baldwin. I, I do, I, too. I, you know, he, he had such a great, he, he, I think he's a fantastic actor. And he I is. don't, I don't think, I, I don't know why he didn't continue on in this franchise, I love Patriot Games, and I especially love Clear and Present Danger. And I love Harrison Ford as Jack Ryan. And why they didn't go on and do either Dead of Honor or uh, especially Executive Orders, I, I don't know. But I don't know. I, I've always loved Alec Baldwin in Malice, Al, Alec Baldwin oh, in, in, in uh, Glengarry Glen Ross. I mean, yeah. he's always great. You ask me who you ask me if I have a God complex. Let me tell you something. I am God. It's so great. <laughs> and he's he's a great uh, Trump on Saturday Night Live. Yeah, I mean, but but that even I mean I feel like Alec Baldwin should be one of our great matinee idols, and he is. But but he didn't. He, well, it, I mean, he was on Thirty Rock, and that's a great show, and he is amazing on that show. I know, but I he, don't know if you've ever watched it, but no, he just it's, you're just not a good you're not a comedy guy. I am a comedy guy. I love, <laughs> I love good comedies. You know, sitcoms, sitcoms are not cinematic enough for me to. That's my problem with them. I mean, to me, to me, when I'm watching a, a sitcom, it's a premise. It's a setup and a payoff. I just there's not enough there for me to. I love comedy. I do. It's true. You'll watch. Um... Uh, comedy specials. Yeah, I, I love you. You know, I love stand up comedy. I yeah. love stand up comedy. I love, there's a lot of comedy I well, like. I mean, you, maybe, maybe you had a bad impression of sitcoms because in the 80s it was like in front of a live audience. No, I grew up watching like, sitcoms. I watch, I mean, I grew up watching. Yeah, but, but late, like 30 Rock, there's no live audience. It's like a, it's actual, no, no, like, I, it's like a show. I, 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 no, I get that. I understand. I, I, I just, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, I, I, I was more of a movie guy than a sitcom guy. Yeah. And I like comedies. I like, look, Arthur, Tootsie. You know those those are movies that were totally. Two. Well, those are those were movies were seminal. Look, I loved I loved Animal House. I can recite the entire movie, Caddyshack. But anyway, but like some of these shows are like those movies. I know they're just it's I know, I know. What can I say? So so wait wait a minute. We got we we haven't even gone to viewer uh, uh, chat. What people are sa saying to us? Yes. But so so at the end of this movie. They're going through. A they're going up a river, and yeah. and Alec Baldwin's finally talking to Marco Ramius. They're bonding on the fishing tip. They both grew up fishing. Right, and and he even says like that's all he wants to do is to go fishing once he comes to America. And we don't even talk about the fact that um, uh, that the, the 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 saboteur on the hunt for Red October is Maximus Decimus Meridius's. Second in command, who sells him out in Gladiator, another Paramount movie a decade later. I mean, this movie is like a Paramount dream. I'm wet telling dream. you, they were they were all there, and they just like pulled them in from different shows and stuff and movies. People <laughs> like, people should know when they're conquered. Would you, Quintus? <laughs> Would I? Anyway, uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah. So so. So before we go to the viewer, uh, viewer, whatever viewer uh, chats, I don't know what you'd call them, viewer input. What on the the tips? Yeah, the, the tips and, and the, the super, super chats, chats, whatever. The, the live questions, all that. Yeah. Uh, the support of the channel. 
or do you have any 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 uh, uh, what are your thoughts to, to to conclude your impressions of what would you tell like if your mom asked you in French how would your mom ask you Elizabeth should I watch The Hunt for Red October? How would you Actually, say Actually, I think my mom would really, really like this film. So how would she say and, that and, to you in French? I remember watching it with, at least with my dad. Probably my mom was there. We always watched movies together, so. So if you were to, how would she say this to you in French? Should I watch Hunt for Red October? Uh, 30,000 subs, babe. Come on, man. That's beyond my control. All right. So in English, what do you think your mom would say? Like, how your mom would, 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 do you think after she saw this, what would she say about the film? My mom is a voracious movie watcher. Like, she loves movies, so she's always asking to borrow Blu-rays. What can I watch now? What should we, can you, what? can you loan me some, some movies? She always wants movies. Like, she'll take stacks of movies. We should let her borrow this one. <laughs> what are you talking about? No! Yeah. No, no. My mom is meticulously no. neat too. She will not destroy your, and she'll know exactly where it is. It's not like she's gonna lose it. What, what do you have to do this to be on a live broadcast? You know that. I am not. No. It's fine. Anyway, well then, why don't we why don't we see what other people have to say about this movie? <laughs> because <laughs> we can do that. Yes, we can. Uh, let's see. Let's go back. Let's go back down. Uh, and uh, uh, wait, hang on. Where was I? Here we go. Uh, Julius is here. Julius sends in a tip and says, Madame, I have heard a most scurrilous rumor. It seems <laughs> that you have, to use an old Beavis and Butthead term, bogarted the second bottle of pinchy, pinchy wine. Uh, <laughs> Why did you tell them? I didn't know. I was saying it live. Like... Yeah, that wine Wait, was hang so on. good. I do believe I saw a tear in Mr. Burnett's eye as he said this. <laughs> Milady, say it isn't so. Hey, what? Okay, look. Occasionally when Rob is trying to clean this space, he will grab a bottle of wine. So I wanted him to know that he better not <laughs> he better not take the pinchy wine because I loved it so much. Uh, now, you took me aside. You like said, and I did. I, I'm like, I will not take this wine. I was like, don't take this wine. I, I, I'm like, okay. Because I want to enjoy it too. I, I understand, but you, you know, you're on some special diets. So you got to watch the, the. I cannot just randomly have wine all the time. Right. Well, I shouldn't either. Well, no, you shouldn't. But okay, but it's you know, it's good for you. <laughs> it's good for you, Pop. I learned that from the Godfather. It's it good is. for you, Pop. One glass a day. That's not true. That I is don't, true. I don't drink every day. Come on. Anyway, so yes, yes, the uh, the wine is put away for, um, yeah, for whenever we want to enjoy it. So at least well, it's we for can... you. You, that's for your. I, look, I have capitulated. That bottle of wine is yours. That came oh, as part of. Well, Ju thank you, Julius. Julius uh, entered us in a <laughs> wine club that actually came directly from him. Yes. No, I love that wine. It tastes like roses. It, yeah, it, it did. It was great. So I, 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 I have, I have, I've, I've let you have that. That is your bottle of wine. Well, thank you. I, I told you that though. <laughs> I like, I like sharing wine with my friends too. And I have, we have friends that love wine. Love wine. Yeah. And so I would love for them. We to haven't taste been it. able to see them in, in, I in know. we haven't seen them since February. Yeah, and in that in the meantime, they've sold their house. <laughs> they've moved. Like it's like mind blowing. Um, yeah, but I would love to share that wine with them. They would love it. Um, <clears throat> Tibula the spider monkey sends in a tip and says, "Tim says this is not only my favorite John McTiernan film; it's also my favorite Jack Ryan film. I love Clear and Present Danger and Patriot Games. I didn't mind the other two, but nowhere near as good. But this is the best." Scott Glenn was great in it as well. Well, Tim, I have to say, I agree with you. This is my favorite Jack Ryan movie, although I have great big love for Clear and Present Danger as well. Um, and I have to tell you, I really like Some of All Fears. I like Some of All Fears better than Patriot Games. Just saying. Um, is this your favorite Jack Ryan movie? I mean, if I could remember the other ones. <laughs> That's okay. Yes, because it has Sean Connery. <laughs> no, this is a great film. I really, really, really like it. <laughs> it is. It's so good. Uh, 200 Watt Studio sends in a super chat and says, 
I saw this in the cinema on first release. I loved it. The Basil Polidoro score is fantastic. I have the LD, the DVD, the Blu-ray. How good is the 4K? Bruh. <laughs> Bruh, can I just tell you? It is a new transfer, and it is... Mwah, it's beautiful. It's worth getting. It is worth getting. It's really, really good. So, yes, yes, get it. Uh, Mark C., Mark Jure says... I say yes to the Captain Ramius hot toy if it comes with a change of clothes and a ponytailed hairpiece to make it a Dr. <laughs> Campbell figure from Medicine Man as well. It's, wow, you want a quick change to another John McTiernan film? Look, why not throw in a Lorraine Bracco action figure just because the world needs one? Yeah, I, I know, Medicine Man. I don't, I don't, I can't explain that movie. Have I don't you seen know it? If I've seen it. You probably haven't, but it's it's another Connery film where he's in the he's in he's in the woods. Oh, it's not so good, Mark. I, I don't know how I don't know. Oh, look, Sean Connery's here. What? Sean Connery tips a dollar and says, "Evening, what Robert and Elizabeth? <laughs> it is I, Sean Connery. <laughs> I am pleased the two of you enjoyed this classic film. It is one of my greatest accomplishments. I watch your show always." <laughs> You're the man now, dog. Wob. For old time's sake, Bond. Bond. James <laughs> yes. Bond. Well, Mr. Connery. Oh, um, I'm so happy you're here. I, I, I am have, a huge fan. I, I, I have something. Remember, the camera's up there now. I have something to say to you, Mr. Connery. 1966. Petula clock. Up the ash. Only you would get that. Just saying. Um, so thanks, Sean. Wayne Edwards sends in a tip. Why, thank you, Wayne. Hello, this is Wayne Edwards again. Thank you both for the well wishes on my dinner date last Friday night. It yes. went very well. Yay. So well, in fact, <laughs> she is planning the next one for this yeah. coming Saturday. Nice. Thanks again. By the way, I love this film as well. Awesome. So should we take Wayne up on... on is Wayne our new budding romance that the uh, whining is, about? You have to keep us Okay, updated. Wayne, if you're going to keep us abreast, and I'd say you seem to be abreast of this relationship, <laughs> I think it's important we have updates. Yeah, totally. Like, you know. Now um, we're drawn in. Now we're drawn we're in. We're second date now. So, uh, <laughs> it went, hang on a second. I got to say, I got to take, I got to take umbrage though. Can you take umbrage? Is that the right use of the word? Uh, so well, in fact, she's planning the next one for this coming Saturday. So, you went la you went out last Friday, which is good. Okay, so now it what's it? Today? today is Monday. Yeah. Okay, so it's only a couple days. She's planned a date for next Saturday. Yeah. That's good because you didn't like freak her out by calling her the next day, going, "Can I shoot? Can I shoot tonight?" Uh, that's good. <laughs> I think this is good. Uh, this good. It's uh, very good. Good. Hey, look who's there, Jack Wallace, who made your... By the way, you should... You, there's something... Can you... Here, look at this. Um, Jack Wallace's son is getting this. This is a Comic-Con exclusive Captain Kirk action figure from where no one has gone before. No man has gone before the second pilot. It's part of what's going into the box that's going out this week, by the way, with the comics. Cool. Yes. Anyway. So Jack says, hey, guys... Aiden likes your Star Trek Red October crossover idea. He is asking if you would please give us a closer look at the Rocketeer figure. Oh. Okay, that's you. You know what? You're gonna have to yeah. be, be careful. Don't, don't worry. No, we're gonna see how you do. We'll Come see how you do. On, Come on, man. We'll here, if we're gonna have a closer Jeez. look, we're gonna switch the camera angle here. And, and guess what's right by him? I know. So this. They've never made a really good American six-scale figure, the Rocketeer. This figure is made by Metacom. Now, you can't take the helmet off, so it doesn't look like Billy Campbell. I think I got this figure about, I don't know, I want to say 15 years ago. Uh, this is a Metacom real-action hero figure, and their figures look very manga-esque. Well, but... show them the back. Oh, the, yeah. The... Here, so... This is a really, I, I mean, the detailing, this is one of my favorite, um, and this is made by Metacom, again, 
one of my favorite figures that they ever made. And they made, this is the first one they made. They made a second one where he's got a gun. I didn't get the second one. But a lot of their figures suffer from brittle plastic and they break. But this figure has not. And I, I love this figure so very much. And then, of course, Zardoz. Zardoz speaks to you. Once again, if whenever I show this, I have to credit Geek Santa Cliff Stevenson for this. Is by the way a belt buckle, as you can see, it's a belt buckle. I don't think I could ever wear this. One day I'm going to have to go somewhere with you and wear this. Absolutely. And we won't tell anyone. We'll see if anyone notices. But will you wear a red? A red. I'm not going to wear the. No, I'm not going to wear Zed. No, no, I'm not. Tom Hanks sends in a tip and says, Hey guys, Rob, can I call you that? Yeah, you can. Rob said that 2020 is the 30th anniversary of this film, and if it were made today, it probably wouldn't get made. I beg to differ. It would be made and chucked to Apple TV like my movie Greyhound cries softly. Oh. Tom Hanks is starting. Yeah, you know what, though? You're probably right, but I don't know. Not to disparage anyone who made Greyhound, I just think that, you know, when John McTiernan was firing on all cylinders, uh, he was firing on all cylinders. And this film is, uh, it's amazing. It's, it's, um, yeah, but you, you know what? You might be right, Tom Hanks. Uh, I, I, yeah, you might be right. I mean, you know, the problem is this film has great visual effects. It's all models with some CGI. There's some CGI missiles and 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 countermeasures but for the most part it's large-scale models shot in 65 millimeter now everything is cgi which especially in the real world it's one thing to recreate one thing but entire mil uh, entire things are now created boats subs all that and they're just not believable the richard says sends in a super chat thanks to richard there's a zoom after party the Hunt for Red October and K-19 The Widowmaker, 30 minutes after the show. I've already paid for it, laugh out loud. The Richard on Twitter. By the way, The Widowmaker, K-19, that's uh, Catherine Bigelow. So, Catherine Bigelow directed that. John McTiernan, I'm all for that double feature. The President sends in a tip and says, <laughs> Alec Ball, Alec Ball is an unfunny hack who threw away a franchise that went to Harrison Ford. I can't do Trump. For two successful sequels. He did The Shadow, which I enjoyed, but bombed. He could have been a leading man, but became a good Kafifi character actor. Lost potential. Well, President Trump, I don't know if I can say that, but... Um, it's just the president. We don't know the president of what. That's right. As Snake Plissken said, president of what? <laughs> that's not very funny, Plissken. Uh, that's not funny, Plissken. Lee Van Cleef, what a, what a, what a joy he is. Timbula the Spider Monkey sends in a tip and says, I get not wanting to loan out discs. I have a very small list of people who I trust to take <laughs> my discs. My girlfriend's nephew can watch whatever he wants when he's here, but not borrow. Well, maybe not whenever he wants. Definitely like Hanzo the Razor. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Captain Claudius is here. We're drinking Captain Claudius' wine. Yes, we are. Love the way they immersed you in the world by showing the characters doing their complicated jobs and not explaining it to you like children. Absolutely yeah. correct. Absolutely correct. Um, yeah. I, I agree. This movie presupposes intelligence on the part of the audience, which is unfortunate because the gatekeepers at studios, and I mean gatekeepers, not like, you're a Star Trek gatekeeper on YouTube, or you're a Star Trek gatekeeper on... I'm not gatekeeping you from doing anything, but the people at the studios are stopping movies from getting made. They're gatekeeping filmmakers because they don't know. But I agree, man. I agree. Um, uh, wait, hang on. Where were we? Uh, Captain it reminds me of the heady days of Sean Connery and Alec Baldwin when the world trembled at the sound of a Jack Ryan movie. Now they will tremble again at the sound of our silence. The order is... Engage the silent drive. It's true. Um, 200 Watt Studio sends in a super chat and says, Love the way they immersed you in the world by showing the characters doing their complicated jobs and not explaining it to you like children. I agree. Did I say... I you read that. I mixed that up. You did. I, I mixed it up. 
Captain Claudius and 200 Watt Studio are not the same people. They are not. They're not the same people. So I mixed that up, but I got it right then. I fixed it. You, you, it's fine. Are you sure? It's not fine. It's fine. Sean Connery comes back with another tip and says, <laughs> what else can I say? She started singing downtown <laughs> as a result. Wahaha, 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 <laughs> splendid. 200 Watt Studio says, no shit, Buckwheat, a flying gas can. Love it. That would, of course, be the helicopter that was flying uh, yep. Jack Ryan to the right. Dallas. Um, Jack Claudius Donaghy says, <laughs> huh, this quote is for Elizabeth. For God's sakes, Lemon, we'd all like to flee the cleave and club hop down at the flats and have lunch with little Richard, but we fight those urges because we have responsibilities. <laughs> The Cle is that what you guys called Cleveland? The Cleave? People from Cleveland don't call it the Cleave. <laughs> What's the flats? Did you club hop at the flats? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. <laughs> yes, I did. The flats are right on the river. It's very cool. You can actually, you could, I, I don't think it's like this anymore. I don't think there's clubs down there anymore, but um, you could actually take a boat up to the clubs. You could? Yeah. Where do you get on the boat? I mean, you have to own a boat or nobody know somebody that owns a boat. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, okay. But I don't think it's clubs anymore in the flats. Uh, well, I haven't I, been to, I haven't been in Cleveland in so many years. Uh, we sold my childhood home about uh, 10 years ago that long ago don't look at me I, I don't know what to say and I haven't lived in Cleveland in like 25 years which is sad I miss it that is sad mm -hmm. well I've never been to Ohio well we should go we were supposed to go this year for my uh, 30th reunion oops they have postponed it until next year <laughs> so it's your 31st reunion. yeah my 31st reunion hmm at Beaumont School for Girls. Like semen Beaumont. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's a biologic. All right. Anyway. Well, we're way past time. We are indeed. I mean, uh, can I just wax rhapsodic? <laughs> if you haven't guessed it yet, I, I love this movie so much. Do you love this movie as much as I do? I do love this movie. It's very good. <laughs> mm. It's very good. That's it? I love this movie. It's great. I mean, okay. That's it? You love this movie? It's great? I mean, don't you don't you have an underlying, just bubbling passion for the greatness of... Well, okay. If I, if I go on and on too much about how great this movie is, then I can't get annoyed when you put it on anymore. Then I can't pretend that it's annoying. That's exactly, that's my reverse psychology at work on you. It was fun to, to, to rib you on that. Uh, I know, but, 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 but now that you're joined the, the Hunt for an October cult. Oh, is it a cult now? Well, I mean, you know, kids today aren't, kids today just don't, they just don't understand how great Marco Ramius is as a character. They would say he's probably like some kind of an old cis male. So why should we follow a guy like him? He's James Bond. Come on, man. Uh, again, not exactly. Uh, that's not going to help you. Not today. <laughs> not gonna. He's James Bond. He's a sexist, misogynist dinosaur. He's a relic of the Cold War. Maybe he is. Thank fucking God. <laughs> because you know what? Kids today. He's Zed. If anybody Come was on, on the, the people that I, uh, on Twitter and all that. If the world was coming to an end, we would all fucking die. Because nobody would ever empower anyone that was capable to actually stop whatever onslaught of evil was out there. That's right. It's true. They'd be telling you, you can't do that. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. 
Movie Finobi sent in a super chat and says, when is the mistress of movies stop motion movie coming out? Aha. Uh-huh. P.S. I love The Hunt for Red October. Why don't you play my trailer? I, I, it, it's, not, it's not in here. Oh, you want me to play your trailer? Yeah. Like, really, you're going to make me, like, delve into my computer, yeah. I mean, and play your trailer? Yeah. Well, okay, hang on. Let me see if um, I can find it. We have to go deep, 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 deep. Where is it? Uh, Elizabeth's film. Uh, I hope that's not my... It's, I hope that's not me. Is that... Um, I don't think so. I think that's... No, that's not that's the right one. That's living with R&B. Yeah, well, okay. I, I mean, you're asking me on the fly to find something, and, and uh, somebody is... You're, uh, what can I say? I mean, I'm going to go look and find it. I'll play your stop motion. It is your show, after all. You can play whatever you want. <laughs> so, um... Mm, Elizabeth's film... Dion. Um, Real Girl? No, that's no. not it. Trinidad. Ah. Babe, I don't know. You didn't even save my trailer. I did save it, but that I don't know where really it is. Sad. I don't. No, this isn't. This is the ones I've. I don't know where it is. I don't know what I called it. Um. Hang on, I'm looking. I don't know. Oh man. What can I say? Hang on, I'm looking, I'm looking. Um, Why wouldn't it be with with the uh, living with R and B? Why wouldn't they be? I don't know. I don't know why. I uh, because you gave them to me differently. I don't know. Well, that's true. Sorry, I can't. Yeah, they were done differently. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I'll find it. I've got it on the computer. It's somewhere here. It's just those are the ones that I have to. I have to produ- produce them. Oh, so hang on. Yeah. Um, uh, the Squish Show says, I love this movie. I just wish it was longer. Sometimes because it seems like it flies by when I watch it. Goddamn right. Yes, it does. It's not long enough. This movie should be eight hours long, in my mind. Uh, Med6814 sent in a super chat. Thank you, Med. Uh, movie Finobi says, Rob, these are the things we do for love. And it is her show. I'll bet Rob is stealing baby's lollipops when Elizabeth is kissing them. That's a great, that's a great, I'm a politician. When I'm not kissing babies, I'm stealing their lollipops. That is a Richard Jordan line from Hunt for Red October. My God, movie Finobi, that's exactly right. That's great. Well, Elizabeth, we have come to the time in this show... Where the, uh, the, 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 uh, uh, what do we call it? The bottoms up the scale. The bottoms up And what is the bottoms up scale? Oh, I didn't mean to touch her boob. <laughs> she have great boobs, by the way. Wow. What is the bottoms up scale? <laughs> the bottoms up scale is from one to four glasses of wine. You're very buoyant. <laughs> Your boobs are buoyant. You could, you could, you could, you have ballast. You wouldn't sink. I love that. So anyway. I wouldn't make a good submarine. Well, let's not. Uh, I I I I didn't say that. There's a lot there, a lot to unpack. So so, uh, what are you saying? On the bottoms up scale. Oh, wow. Okay, the bottoms up scale is from one to four glasses because there are four glasses of wine in a bottle. What the hell? There are. Okay, so on a scale of one to four, four being the the best. One to four glasses. What would you rate The Hunt for an October? Why don't you rate it first? Uh, this film is, to me, the pinnacle of 1990s studio filmmaking. There is nothing about this film that I don't love. Now, is it Lawrence of Arabia? Is it all about Eve? Is it The English Patient? No. <laughs> but my whole thing about authorship, what did the filmmakers intend to do when they set out to make this film. What did the studio want to do? This film succeeds on every level. It does. I give this film four glasses of wine. <laughs> I drink to Marco Ramius and the crew of the Red October. And to Cortez, who burned his ship. I will also give it four glasses of wine. Really? Here's to Sean Connery. You know what's crazy? Hmm. 
He's 90 now. He's he was 90. 60 when he made this. Wow, and he he was really I mean, nice. literally a, a third he made this movie a third of his life ago and at 90 he's still going strong. Do you think he ever gets up and goes his wife is still here apparently? Do you think do you think actors or actresses who are in these seminal films that we watch over and over again cuz I've talked about this on my show early on. Do you think they get up and they think to themselves I was in the motherfucking hunt for Red October. Do you think actors ever walk around and think like 30 years ago they were in an awesome film? Do they ever think about it or do they not pay attention? It was a job, it was in the past. I don't know. Some of them pretend like they don't watch their films or, or even care. Look, I, I will tell you, an actor... I think that's all... That's No, no, no. An actor can never watch a film they were in and enjoy it as an audience member because they can only, they they only well, know right. what, they, what. Right, I get that, but um, a lot of them pretend like they don't even, you know, like they've never watched their own films or they never, you know, they don't think about it or you know, which I think is so pretentious. Right. Come on, man, you were in a movie. Well, no, but but you have to understand when you're making a film. When you're make, making a movie, has no bearing on what it's like to watch a finished film. You, it, right. And, and anyone who's in a film will never be able to watch a movie they're in and have an experience of 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 knowing that film the way we do as fans. That's true. They never can. No, they never can. And and but I bet you, I bet you, when Sean Connery's wife asks for a cocktail, he asks her. If she wants it shaken or stirred. You don't think that joke got old like 80 years ago? No, she probably loves it. She loves when he says it. Well, what if she makes the cocktail and she says, do you want it shaken or stirred? Or shaken, Maybe. not stirred. She was like, you stirred me last night. How about I shake you tonight? <laughs> That's right. That's exactly right. Right? That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <clears throat> um, Swack props. Cal is here. Ravel used to make a model of the Red October. Did you get your hands on that? I want one back then, but it wasn't available where I was, so I got the standard Typhoon class instead. Cal, I want. I've seen people online who have models of the Red October. I think my friend Jeff Bond has one. I would love to get one. It's not very big, because you, you know you, you, it's like this big. But if you want one, you should get like a. Honey, you don't have room for a big submarine you just don't that's what she said um ricky b sends in a super chat and says what about baldwin's impersonation of connery i'm not I'm, <laughs> i loved it, it oh oh it's the best in the movie when he's cra yeah. crawling yeah i thought that was great it's great and it's so good <laughs> it's and i wonder i don't know if that was an ad lib or that was in the script I think I that was think an ad lib. I think it was an ad lib. Come on, man, Alec Baldwin. Yeah, that yeah. was an ad lib. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, kind souls, however you identify, across the twenty-eight known galaxies, we are bringing an end to Elizaview's episode seventy-four, "The Hunt for Red October." Yes, I think that you should play the "Living with R and B." You want me to play "Living with"? Okay. Why not? It's there. Okay, so Elizabeth made a movie about what it's like to live with me that I played. <laughs> she made it for the, uh, uh, the 500th 500. episode of Rob Observation. So but here... I might make more. She's going to make more. So I'm going to play it because she asked. So here is her movie about what it's like to live <laughs> with me. <clears throat> oh, it's not there. Jeez. See, apparently I didn't do the right thing. You don't have either one of my movies. No, well, okay, hang on. Okay, since you want me to play it, there That's is fine, there whatever. no no, there is a version of it. Hang on. Just hold on. Just just wait. Okay, I can I, I will get it for you. Uh wait, hang on. So all of you are going to watch this in real time as I go figure out a way to get this. Alright, I'll get it. Don't worry. Oh, you know what? It doesn't look like there's anything here. Well, we'll see. Let's add it, and I'm going to go to, uh, I'll go to the desktop, because it is your show. So, what, let's see what the file is. Name. Uh, it's called Living with R&B, is that what the original? Yeah. Okay, we'll go. Wait, I saw some. 
go back up. Uh, mm -hmm. Elizabeth. Oh. What is that? Well, these are all oh. these are all things. Hang on, just hold on. Hey, hey. I know I've fine. got. It's fine. It's fine. I've got. Well, now hang on. Life with Rob. Let's see. Perhaps that's there. And let's see if that's. Uh, we'll try and play it. We'll try it this time, since you want me to do In it. A world where one man and one woman are uh, all nope, that stands between not. the yeah, ultimate this. evil and the final fate of humanity. He look. We should give him some cheese. He deserves some cheese. He wants some cheese. He loves the cheese. No cheese at the table. He's not at the table. He, Can't no, believe this is all at my expense. No, no, no. It's what makes them badly behaved. You know, are you badly behaved? Look, yes, he's sitting on the yes. ground. He's begging all the time. He's not begging all the time. Well, right now he's not because he got tired of begging. Are you tired of begging? I think he deserves some cheese. No, it's bad behavior. You're breaking SAG rules by not giving him his meal. Right, buddy? Come on, dude. He has his own food. He can have treats when it's appropriate. You don't not, think it's appropriate now? Not at the table. I want you to just pan over here. You've left a uh, cheese on the table. I yeah, because I was eating it. Yeah, you're eating it, but they think that, like, you can't, like, taunt them with that kind because of food. Because you taught them to beg at the table. No, no, don't give him he anything. He wants Cas Graphics cheese. No. Hey, look, I'm eating, I'm eating pizza that's full of cheese, and he's not begging for it. He was just a second ago. No, he wasn't. Yes, he was. I don't see it on camera, do you? Get down. Gilbert. Gilbert, are you are you that obsessed? Are you that cheese obsessed? So is Tallulah. I also, they're being perfectly quiet. Yeah. If it's not one dog, it's another. I mean, right, Tallulah? Because I wasn't, I wasn't recording at that moment. Look, he's just looking right up at me forlornly because you won't give him cheese. Yeah, no cheese at the table. And cheese is his emergency word. So you just said it. I know. When Tulula heard you say it. <clears throat> yeah, she did. She's like, where is it? What do you think? She looked at me at me. She looked at me at me. Finishing my lunch. Oh my god. Tell me when you're going. So I gave her a voic comp test and she is actually artificial, which is great, which means I can do I know she doesn't know she's artificial. But it means I can do anything I want with her. Because she's a replicant and she's a pleasure bomb. So I'm really excited about that. I know, right? She still doesn't know, but she is. Oh, okay. Should I move this so you can see it? Let me move them over here. How can you not know what you are? I know, she doesn't know. But no, I love Star Trek motion picture. Don't, don't, I do. She's, she wonders if she's a replicant or a lesbian. She asks me that all the time. I don't know what to tell her. <laughs> right into the camera. There's the camera. Find the camera. Find the lid. Find the lid. Yes. Trust me, that was really good Blade Runner stuff. Come on. She when she wants, she wants to be on the camera. She's oh, like, yeah. you want? Yes. So, Greg, you've got a lot of all of this detailing and the, like the weathering and all this, and like I love this. Tell me what went on tonight. Give me, give me a, a recap, just quickly. Once you had it made, was it hard to go fuck it up? Okay, so we waited an hour and a half in line. <laughs> shoot, shoot, Greg, and then kind of point, and I'll be here doing. I'm shooting all the interior stuff. <laughs> Once we got inside, we got to a an aisle that was pretty much picked over. You want me just to shoot him? Yeah, just shoot him. But found some cool stuff, and <laughs> that's great. That's really long. Here we are. <laughs> Smoked salmon and cheese is like, is like, 
he's you know what he is? He's like he's like a crack addict. And what do we say? Everyone you meet has a story to tell that you have yet to hear, and all you have to do is listen. Buddy. Look at that. He wants this so bad. Ooh, you did it right that time. Nicely done. I struggle with that. But you got it right. That was amazing, babe. Give me a kiss. <laughs> Come on, baby. What's up? Oh. You got to sit. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Um, and? Have a better night. Uh-oh. I cut off your credit. Thanks. Filmed by Elizabeth. Well, you made the film. <laughs> why don't you explain why you pilloried me on the internet like that? Pillory I'm just you. kidding. It's funny. I love Come that on. film. I mean, I, I, I think it's delightful. That was one of the first things you edited, right? Well, no. What do you mean? Well, no, you. that's a six-minute piece. That's a really nice piece of... Yeah, uh, I've edited things before that. Well, okay, but that was your longest movie. Uh, maybe. It was. Okay. It's okay. I'm just saying, uh, you know, as the subject of your film, I wanted to admire your inner cutting, and I was going to give you some praise about all the you were, choices you made. You but you decided not to? Well, no. I mean, uh, clearly, if you, you know, what can I tell you? I don't know. I, I'm very flattered you made that movie, but didn't you, it was, it was, you made that for the 500th episode of Observation? I did. I did. I can make more. I'm terrified. The behind the scenes. I'm just terrified. No, the, the videos you have of me are terrifying. Oh, come on. It's all in good fun. I think we should end this episode. I think episode. we should. Okay. Uh, it's a long episode of the show. But, okay, so uh, we know what we've... We both, four, four glasses of wine will take us out. Everyone you meet has a story to tell that you have yet to hear, and all you have to do is listen. All you have to do is listen, and... Free the toys. No, that's not... No! <laughs> no what? <laughs> Come on, that's not what you're totally supposed to say. We're going to start doing that next week. Have a better night. Have a better <laughs> night. We are going to start freeing the toys. Uh, fully articulated, our new show where you are going to open my toys. And free them. And free them. Yeah. And there's more stop motion coming. There's more stop... Yes, there is. There is. Okay. And on that note... Have a better night. Have a better night. And we're coming back on Wednesday with The Verdict. Paul Newman in The Verdict. Do you or know, Molly's... What or Molly's game. game. What do we... Do you know what we're showing on on, uh, on Friday? What's Romantic Friday? I haven't decided yet. <laughs> but I will decide soon. <laughs> In a world. All right, then. Thanks for being here. Thanks to the moderators. Uh, Mr. Derringer is here. Joshua Levesque is here. Robert Pariso is here. The Richard is here. My God. We have a cornucopia of moderators. Thank them. Thank you very much. Thank all of you for supporting the channel through tips and super chats. And thank you very much for people that write letters and send videos. You can do that at theburnetwork.net. And in the top right-hand corner of the website, there's a place where you can send me letters or you can send Elizabeth letters. We'll read them on Rob Observations or on this show. Just please put in the subject matter, or the subject heading, whichever show you want us to uh, see it for. And we will. So thanks very much. And as always, have a better night. See you on Wednesday. Wednesday. For Elizabeth, you 75. Our 75th 75. show. Wow. My God. Amazing.